Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Guys, I've not been on for a quick minute um, posting any videos or anything. I've been on a few times with Sam and Andy and we've had some good talks, uh, but I, I haven't done a solo video like this for a little bit. So I did just want to jump on, um, let you guys kind of know what's happening. There is a lot of, you know, fear, uncertainty and doubt still out in the market right now. Um, but I really do think we're on the brink of making that next leg up. I don't think this is the time you really want to be second guessing things and getting out and getting into other things or, or whatever. So if you're still in crypto, uh, you're still in Bitcoin, congratulations. I think we're just about to get through this, this boring sideways time that we've been in for a while now, since about April. Um, so I want to show you guys some things that are happening right now that kind of indicate that, that we are coming into this next phase. Um, so I'm going to share with you guys all of that information. Uh, but before we get into all of that, guys, as always, this entire month, I am spotlighting the Zend Final Farm and Sanctuary. Uh, this is a, a small animal sanctuary. Um, and if you guys feel like doing something positive today, just please consider going over and helping the animals out at the Zend. Um, you know, these are animals that have been abused, abandoned, neglected, uh, that these guys have taken in and are trying to, to let them live out their lives here at, at their sanctuary. So, uh, you know, with them being such a small sanctuary, a few dollars really is all it takes to, to kind of help these animals out. If you guys can, that's great. I, um, the, the link to this description is in all of my, uh, videos this month. Uh, but it is the Zend TX .org. And if you go over here, this is their, their homepage, but if you hit more and hit monthly sponsors, you'll see this donate now button. If you hit that, it will take you to their PayPal where you can just, you know, donate a few bucks, you know whatever you can spare um always appreciated on my my end and it is also a 501c nonprofit, so it does help you out when it comes tax time um you can write anything you donate to these guys off so um i do also so i have the link to their homepage in my description of my videos i also have a link directly to their PayPal. So go into the description, go over there, help these guys out, do something positive for the day. Uh, I appreciate you guys even considering it. So, um, okay, so let's get into it. Um, I do want to take you guys over to uh, the charts really quick. Let's go over here. Um, so here's trade view um, and I've, I've drawn a few things here and I just want to show you guys a few things here in the charts that are looking really good. Um, as you can see, uh, you know, this is when we came up, we started making all time highs right here. These green vertical lines are the days of the having that I've marked out. So we did come up, we broke all time highs. And ever since we've, you know, technically you could look and you could say, well, we're putting in lower highs and we're putting in lower lows. That's a downtrend. You know, that's not a good thing, right? Um, and yeah, technically, yeah, that's true. But as you can see, this, these are broadening lines. These lower highs are broadening out from the lower lows. And what this pattern is, this is called a megaphone pattern. Um, and technically, megaphone patterns are bullish and break out to the upside ultimately. So uh, to demonstrate that, I want to show you exactly. So during this period last cycle, I want to show you exactly what we were doing right here. Um, let me just zoom in so you can kind of see that better but just about the same time 
frame, we were putting in another megaphone pattern right here. And you can kind of see once we broke above this, that's when we really started to take off. Um, now, if I zoom out and show you guys where we went to after we broke out of that, all of this other nonsense, these were like 30, 40, 50% corrections down here, guys. But when you zoom out to where we went, this just looks like a, all, all of this just looks like a blip. So I know it's been boring. I know it's been stressful sometimes. You know, we've seen a 30% correction, close to a 30% correction. I think we actually hit uh, like 27 or 28 is all, but, you know, and those days were not fun by any means. But once we get to where we're going, we're going to look back and go, what 30%? You know, there was a 30% in here. Come on. Um, so just know that, you know, we, we the, the only difference here, guys, is, as you can see, um, in relation to the halving, we started this megaphone pretty far before. And if we come back to the one we're putting in now, we pretty much started, I mean, just right before, right before the halving, we started this. And really what happened, guys, was we had ETFs. So um, let me just zoom in here for a second. Uh, this right before right here right back in october of 2023 once we started this big run up right here this day this is the weekly chart but right when this started pumping up right here i remember exactly where i was and i remember exactly i was in a store um shopping and i i looked at my phone and i i saw that there was some news that BlackRock's iBit Bitcoin ETF had just got listed on the DTCC. So that is what kicked this off. Um, now, a lot of people back when this happened were screaming, none of this, none of this matters. This doesn't mean we're approved, um, which technically was true, you know, just because you're listed on the DTC. DTCC doesn't mean your ETF is approved. However, we had never seen that with any of the other Bitcoin ETF uh, applicants dating back to like 2015. So when that did happen, it kind of signaled that we were on, we were on the track. We were on the track to getting an approval. And, and the market just really reacted that way. We finally got right here to this, this big wick down here and these, these two red ones. That was when the Bitcoin ETF was approved. And because of Grayscale's idiocy in keeping their rates 10 times as high as any of the others, that just kind of caused that sell the news thing. and. Um, you know, we had a lot of fear back then and it turned right around and surprised everybody, all of the bears anyway. Uh, I don't think it surprised, it didn't surprise me. Um, I was happy about it, but it didn't, it, it wasn't a big surprise. Like it made sense that we made this huge step up. The one thing guys that really worried me back here when we were setting highs uh, all time highs before the having that kind of worried me because I thought we were possibly getting too big, too quick, uh, which is not healthy. Um, and there was a big narrative back then. It's still a narrative today, actually. Um, but, and I keep drawing when I'm not meaning to, um, but the narrative back here and that still persists today is that we we have this early all-time high and we're going to have a left translated cycle. So what that means is if 
if you're looking at the charts, um, if you look back at the history of previous halvings and previous cycles, and you apply all of that data, you take averages uh, of time frames and whatnot, what it leads to is it will tell you that we should, man, if I can get this um, on the right time frame, here we go. So we should, if, if you take all of that into consideration, we should peak right about here in October. Now, if we have a left translated cycle and we hit all time highs before the halving, we should be like going up and getting into this parabolic um, thing way before. So we should be in parabolic move right now. And then we should be coming, coming down into the bear market left on the, on the chart before what we normally would, which would be in October, September, October, sometime next year. Um, and so that was a big concern of mine because now listen, I'm, I, I really don't plan on selling my Bitcoin. Um, but I do want to kind of try and time the market for my altcoins and get out before the bear market starts with, with my Solana, with my Ethereum, uh, because I've kept alts. I've never actually tried to time the market before. Um, and I've always kept my alts and some of those alts during the bear market, all the alts go down much harder than Bitcoin does, which says a lot because Bitcoin usually in, in our bear market year goes down 70 to 80%. So it's not a small move, but it's even bigger for alts. And I just don't have any uh, interest in watching my alts do that. I don't really mind as much with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is so scarce that it scares me to honestly be without it. Um, you know, I don't want to be sidelined in Bitcoin. So I, I don't plan on selling my Bitcoin, but I do want to get it out of my alts. And with the four year cycle, I felt like I could, I had a good timeline where I could rely on and kind of dollar cost average out beginning halfway through 2025, right? Or so. Um, but with this left translated cycle theory, that would change everything. Um, and so back here, when, when this really started becoming a thing, uh, right here, where, when we were putting in all time highs before the having that actually kind of scared me, um, because then all bets are off when, when what happens with the, the four year cycle or anything. Uh, but I think since, since then we've really kind of shown that we've, we're doing the same thing we've always done. And what that is, is during the having, we just tend to go sideways and down. Um, if I zoom back out to the previous time, Again, during this whole thing, all we did, I mean, this was, this was for a long time last cycle. I mean, clear back here. I mean, technically these were a lot bigger moves than, than what I was zoomed out, you know, to show. So, but, but technically for this entire time, we were really you know, when you zoom out, we were really just kind of going downwards and to the side, like just sideways, regular stuff, um, especially after the having, like the having happens and look at how low volatility there was right here. There was, I mean, that's just flat really. Um, and so, uh, you know, 
what we've done since the halving really kind of shows me that we're still on track with the four-year cycle. The four-year cycle still seems to be intact to me. Um, I think, you know, what we did was we saw a completely new market open up to Bitcoin, that being Wall Street, and we saw a quick step up, and now we're kind of trading back in, in this four-year cycle, how it normally trades. So that is actually really encouraging to me. As much as I hate these sideways times, it's oh, unbearably boring um, and, and not very much fun. You know, we do have these major times where we just slam down. And then, you know, technically, you know, we just kind of slowly creep back up and then we have a big crash down and you know but overall we just trade sideways and it's it's so so excruciatingly boring but guys like i was showing you on that previous cycle technically without the etf without this big jump up this big leg up that we saw with the etf news and and anticipation and everything we would really I mean, this this megaphone that we're putting in would probably have started clear back here and we'd be megaphoning clear back way before the halving, just like we did last time. Um, so I, I don't know, guys, this to me, this is encouraging because it shows that we are still on track. We haven't had that parabolic, you know, this was not the parabolic move for Bitcoin. That was, you know, kind of an anomaly that we, you know, this was a completely different, um, a completely different market being opened up to Bitcoin that we've never seen before. And it reacted. And now we're back on track with the four year cycle, in my opinion. Um, so that's, that's good. Um, but this is all lining up because we're coming upon the time like September is about the time last cycle, last cycle, it was October. But if you take the halving date last, you know, and count the number of days it took to start going up right about here, this was October. But the having happened one month later last cycle. So where we had the April having this year, it, if you're just going by the dates of the having, technically we should start taking off in September. Now that's important because there's a lot of other things lining up for September, September, October, November. All of these things are lining up, guys. Now the first being, uh, that investors are actually finally starting to come back into the markets right now. We've all markets kind of see this time during the summer where investors go on vacation and they're not trading and they're not, you know, they're not making moves with their money during vacation time. Uh, their kids are off from school. They're, they're out, they're going to Disneyland. They're doing all these things that, you know, they just, are out of the markets during those times. So we've got investors coming back after their holidays, uh, their summer vacations. That's one thing. Um, kids just around here just started going to school yesterday. So that's happening right now. Um, we also have the election in November. Um, and guys, another thing, is happening right now is you can see these these lines these green uh this green yellow and orange line and what you can see happening right now i want to zoom in on this um so you can see we are we haven't crossed yet but this is bound to happen any day now now what this is is these are the 50 the 200 and the 100 moving day or moving averages um and what it shows is during all the 
bull markets, you look into this last um, this last bull market in 2020. What happens when we go parabolic into these parabolic stages? We have green over orange over yellow. Now, when the bear market kicks in, we start seeing these death crosses. So this is a death cross. This was a death cross. And that's, that's just signaling that we are, in fact, in this downward bear market. Um, but when it crosses, when the 50 crosses above these two lines, those are golden crosses. And what we need to happen, the last golden cross we need before everything is lined up, just like back in these previous bull markets, is we need the 100 day, this orange, orange line to break above the 200 day moving average. And that will happen any day now. Um, so this, you know, guys, there's just a lot of FUD out there saying that, you know, this was it. This was the bull market, uh, the ETF approval, the surge we saw right then. That's it for this year. And now we're done. We're going into a bear market. That is not what this is showing. You know, we are going to, we are going to cross and then we will be in this pattern where the parabolic moves really start to move. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Um, I think this really kind of shows that we're continuing up. Um, so we have that. Uh, the other really big thing that we've got coming up, guys, is uh, we have the FOMC that will be cutting rates in September. Now, I say that pretty confidently. I, if you guys remember, uh, I did live stream the FOMC um, conference um, where, where Jerome Powell came out and made a speech after the FOMC meeting last month. Um, and when I got done with that, uh, you know, on the video, I remember saying, well, that's pretty much it. Like he all but said we were going to have rate cuts in September. You know, there was a few times where he was on track to basically come out and say that, uh, you know, I think, I think he was saying something like, you know, that's, that's why we were talking about cutting rates in September. Like it really felt like he was going to come out and outright say that. And I think he caught himself because he kind of stumbled and, and stopped and kind of had to rethink how he would say it without tipping his hand, basically. Um, so, when, you know, after that, that speech, I was like, September's happening. Um, and ever since, we've just seen data point after data point suggesting that, yes, this is the, the, this is the data that Jerome Powell wants to see for rate cuts. So it's just strengthened over the last month. Um, and then, guys, Jerome Powell just made a speech at a, um, a conference, a Fed FOMC um, press conference in Jackson Hole just Friday, guys. Now, I want to jump over to an ABC uh, news piece on what he said. So, um, yeah, listen into this, guys. Breaking news now, Fed Chair Jerome Powell has said the time has come for the central bank to change its policy on interest rates. Let's bring in ABC News correspondent Elizabeth Shelsey with more. Elizabeth Powell is now speaking in Wyoming. What are the key points here so far? You know, Diane, this is the most forceful way yet that the Fed chair has said interest rate cuts are on the way. This would be the first time the Federal Reserve would cut interest rates in four years. And the Fed chair is essentially saying the Fed is on track to do that when it meets again in September. Now, he made clear the timing and exactly how much the Fed cuts is still up for debate. They're going to look at the data in the jobs market, obviously still at inflation data. But what's really important here, Diane, is the Fed chair is indicating that they're now looking at the jobs market and they are a little bit more worried. They're seeing signs that hiring is slowing down, that there is this cooling in the jobs market, and that is a big shift because for the past three years, they have been so focused on bringing down inflation. So in a way, this is a moment where the Fed chair is saying, look, 
we've almost achieved our goal. I'm not ready to quite say victory yet, but inflation is about back where we want it, or it's getting close to that target. Now we're looking at the jobs market. We're a little bit worried, and we see that the time has come to cut those costs. Now, what does that look like in the economy? It means lower borrowing costs for consumers. So your mortgage, your credit card rates, auto loan rates also means lower borrowing costs for businesses. So that's one of the reasons if you're looking at the Dow right now, you would see the market going up. Companies like to see lower interest rates. That help makes it easier for them to take out loans. This would be seen as a stimulative policy. It would help kind of juice the economy. Obviously, one interest rate cut alone, not going to have a huge difference. But if the Fed is signaling this is the direction it's headed, we are headed in this path of, of lower borrowing costs in the future now, Diane. All right, Elizabeth Shelsey, thank you. So technically, um, what Jerome Powell said in that his his exact words were the time has come to change monetary policy. You know, basically, you know, it's time. Rate cuts are coming. So oh, we guys, we do have that as well. Now the past few videos that I've done, I've, I've actually been on with Sam and Andy, um, and we've kind of covered to a big part in both of those last few videos, um, was we, we started, we really talked through what the Japanese yen carry trade was, because that's what happened a few weeks ago, uh, three, three weeks ago or so when we saw that horrible, horrible Sunday night and Monday um, where just all markets, stocks, crypto, everything just tanked. Um, and, you know, if you haven't watched those videos, guys, I'm not going to explain the Japanese yen trade uh, in this video. But in those videos, I did say that rate cuts could further unwind that that carry trade because um, our rates are going to be coming down. It could lead to another situation where the yen gains a lot more strength to the DXY and that, that carry trade further unwinds. So initially I was saying initially we could see some downward pressure because of that on rate cuts. Um, now guys, I want you to understand something. I am not trading that. I am not, I am not selling uh, to for in hopes of of buying in at a lower lower uh, cost. When if if that does in fact happen, I I am not going to be put on the sidelines. First of all, for me, tax implications it just wouldn't make sense. Um, at all to sell and try and try and play that. Um, so just know, guys, I, I'm not suggesting that you try and and do that um, because, you know, honestly, we could we could literally do anything at rate cuts. We could see uh, this this injection of link uh, of liquidity come into the market because of those rate cuts and completely offset any kind of unraveling of the Japanese carry trade. So we could go sideways. We could actually have more liquidity coming into the market and send us up. Um, or we could see that carry trade come, come out and push us down for a, a short time. Now, ultimately, I think rate cuts are only going to bring liquidity into the market. Um, and when liquidity comes into the markets, we do see that money go into crypto uh, stocks, everything, and prices go higher. Now, unfortunately, this means that we do have years ahead of us that we're probably going to see inflation higher again. Um, so if you think that's going to happen, Bitcoin is, in my opinion, your best hedge against that. Um, but I, you know, the point is, is I'm not trying to trade some little blip. You know, I just think it's possible. And so that's why I brought it up. I, I don't want anybody, every, anybody to be surprised 
if we get to rate cuts and and we see a sharp drop initially. Um, because if that does happen, I don't want people panicking and selling. I want you to be prepared. Um, if that does happen, just know that it's not, it's it's gonna be a short, short period of drop. And then we're gonna see that liquidity and stimulant of the markets from those rate cuts. So just be prepared for the possibility of that. I'm not saying to trade it. Of course, you can do whatever you want. I personally don't think it's worth the risk at all being put on the sidelines of crypto and Bitcoin at this point in the cycle ever. Um, because Bitcoin moves, and when it moves, it moves fast. It will leave you behind. Um, so just just be cautious about if you're if you're going to trade anything at this point. Um, personally, I think it's dangerous. But um, yeah, so guys, the point of this video is like, you know, there's so much that is happening and it's all lining up for September, October and November. Um, you know, we've we're ending the summer. We're in in that phase of the Bitcoin halving cycle, we've got rates coming, rate cuts coming, elections, which I don't know if it's, you know, just coincidence, but elections usually have a positive effect on especially Bitcoin's price. Um, and it could just be because that's, that's what happens every, you know, every halving is about four years apart. So, it always happens during election time. But, you know, all of these things are shaping up and they're forming, you know, right into that period of time. And so I just wanted to put this video out to give you guys some hope. Know that we're just about there, guys. Uh, rate cuts for September. The next FOMC meeting, when they, they decide to change, change rates, is September 18th. So we are three weeks away. So guys, just get, get prepared, get excited again. Um, things are about to happen. So um, guys, remember, please, if you like this video, just give me a thumbs up. Uh, I know I ramble on a bit sometimes if if you think I need to shorten these videos up, I always come on to these videos thinking, oh, it's just going to be a quick, short little video to, you know, encourage people. But um, I always end up going way longer than I, than I anticipate. But if you guys like it, let me know. Hit the like button. If there's something you guys think I need to work on, do I need to keep these a little bit shorter for you guys? Give me a comment. Let me know. Like. I'm not going to take it hard, you know. I th I think that would probably be better if I did some shorter videos as well. So let me know any suggestions you have. Give me a like, subscribe. Uh, make sure you stay tuned into this video because I will uh, probably be doing more videos coming the next few weeks, months, uh, whatever. So, and as always, guys, thank you for for lending me your ear. Um, out of your time during your day. I really appreciate you guys coming by and, and watching my videos. Very much appreciated. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.